glad we serve a great God. He truly is great. He's awesome. He's amazing. Let's give a round of applause one more time to the ladies who put all this preparation into the today's world. One of those fine ladies is Miss Granny Sue. We call her that affectionately. It's not an insult, but we love Granny Sue. If you would come forward, please, ma'am. She has a testimony she's going to share with us while she's coming. I'll go I ahead. I just can't believe it. You won't believe it. <laughs> Guys, I got the answer. I found the bargains. I got them all. <laughs> After you go here, you don't need anything else. You got it all. One store. I can't believe it. I gotta share it with you. I just can't keep it a secret. This is so wonderful. You just won't believe. You just won't believe what I found. Can I show them? Go for it. Let's show them. Who loves a bargain? Anybody love a bargain? Oh yes. Usually, sometimes if you're a good good shopper, you can find one and then another one for half price. That's pretty good. I remember a time when you could buy one and get another one for a penny. Y'all remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that goes back a long ways, but they used to have it. And if you get one for the price and then a penny for the next one. It was so good those days, the old days. Well, anyway, I gotta show you what I got. This is good for everybody, anybody. So I'll just tell you what I did. I found a grocery store. I found a store that you go in, you get everything in it. You don't have to go to Walmart. Mm -hmm. It looks better than, what's the best store? Aldi's. You don't, it's all here. And I got it. I want to share it with you. I was walking down life's highway a long time ago. And one day I saw a sign that said, Heaven's Grocery Store. Well, <laughs> I got a little closer and the doors opened wide. And when I came to myself, I found myself inside. Oh, I saw a host of angels who were standing everywhere. They handed me a basket and said, child, shop with care. Oh, everything you needed was there. The first thing I saw was salvation. Amen. Well, I'd gotten that a long time ago. So I passed by and kept on going. And then the angel, one of the angels said, now, everything you need is right here. And all that you can't carry, you can come back for more. I like this grocery store. First, I was... I got some patience. Oh, I know I need that every day of my Christian life. And then, oh, I found some love. You never have too much love. And then, I down the same road, down under, I got some understanding. And then, you need that everywhere you go. Then I got a box or two of, I really need three or four boxes, but I only got two boxes of wisdom. And then I got, no, oh, I got lots of boxes of faith. Because the journey's long when you're serving the Lord. And then, what else did I find? Oh, I found some strength and some courage to do my master's will and to help me run the race that he gave me to run. Oh, and then my basket was getting full, but oh, oh, I need grace. Oh, can't do without grace. And then, oh, I started to the counter to pay for my bill. I thought I had everything to do, I needed to do my master's will. But as I went up the aisle, oh, 
I saw a prayer. I made it fit in my basket. Now it's overloading. <laughs> but then I had to put it in because I knew when I stepped outside, I'd run right into sin. And then there was all, oh, oh, I found <laughs> peace and joy. <clears throat> Can't do without joy and the peace that God, only God can give us. And then, when I went up to check out, the angel said, take them wherever you go. Oh yes, I'll take them everywhere I go. But then, when I got to the counter, I asked the angel, now really, how much is all this gonna make me owe? And the angel said, my child, don't you know Jesus paid it long ago? Amen. Everything a Christian needs. You know, the greatest bargain I ever found, the greatest bargain you'll ever find, folks, in all of this life is God's salvation. Jesus did pay it all. He gave us salvation. He made us his children. And then he made us sisters and brothers by the precious blood of my Savior and Lord. And then he gives us the word of God as a mandate to live our lives, to train our kids, to come together. And then the precious Holy Spirit led each one of us here. You're not here as a member of this church by your own doings. God led each one of us. I know he led me and Papa John here a little bit over four years ago. And the Holy Spirit drew us here and gave us peace. This is where he wanted us to be. And you've all part of our family. And sisters and brothers in the Lord. And because of that, we can worship together the great God that we have and know, and we can serve him together. That we might make a difference in this community, in this state, in this part of our world, because Jesus did. He paid it all. Amen. If you can attest to being a Christian today, would you stand up? We're just going to sing the chorus. Jesus paid it all. Do you know the Lord? If you don't, it's never too late. Jesus paid it all. Love you. Thank you for being part of our church family. Thank you, Miss Granny Sue. That was a blessing, wasn't it? You may be seated. Aren't you glad Jesus paid it all? We didn't even have to go shopping for it. That is a blessing. Well, here in just a moment, we're going to have Brother Matthew Pembridge come. He's going to preach his first message for us. So you are privileged to hear the first message of what will one day be the famous, worldwide, renowned preacher. Matthew, what's your middle name? James. Matthew James Pembridge. But it's going to take a lot of prayer to get him to that place. So we're going to pray for him now and pray for the rest of the service. And then Brother Matthew will preach to us. Lord, we come to you today. I thank you for saving me, for calling me to preach. And Lord, we're thankful that Matthew answered the call to preach. And we're, Lord, we, we're asking more young people to surrender their all to you as well. We thank you for the good example he is to our youth. And we thank you for his willingness to get involved in the church and, and share his sweat and, and his uh, passion for you here at Bible Baptist. And Lord, we just pray that you'd bless him as he speaks to our hearts, captivate his mind. I pray that you would, as you captivate it, that you would help him to share that captivation with us, and may our hearts become captivated with his message as well. God, please calm his nerves and just speak through him, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give Matthew a round of applause. All right. If you have your Bible with you, you can turn to Psalm 
to Psalm 146. In the context of our relationship with God, praise is expressing our admiration for who God is, and thanksgiving is being grateful for what God is and what he does and is doing currently in our lives. You know, you, I paint the picture of the cross, and we thank God for dying on the cross, but we praise God for being able to. Uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about, the difference between praise and thankfulness, but how they're both important. Psalm 146 says this, Praise you the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God, while I have any being. When was the last time you praised the Lord? And I don't mean the song service we just sang. I mean, when was the last time you generally went on with God, praised the Lord for who he is, and what he does in your life? You know, I think that ought to be one of the most important parts of our day. It, uh, it truly is, it sets the tone. You know, I think it should happen in the morning of, that. it sets the standard of what your day is going to be like. And I'll, I'll explain how there's th praise and thankfulness are similar. You know, you can look at verse 5. Happy is the man that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord. The last two words are important here. His God. You know, how many of you are thankful that you can claim God as your own? Amen. Okay, I think that alone should make you happy, no matter how little or how much you have. Being able to wake up and praise the Lord every day for, uh, for who God is. You know, giving God praise, it's a, it's a win-win, you know. Because it brings joy to God, and it brings joy to yourself. You want to make God happy? You want to, you want to make him smile? Praise his name. Exalt him. Lift him up. You, don't be bashful about it either. Psalm 109, verse 30 says, I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Yea, I will praise him among the multitude. Uh, that's not saying just praise him among multitudes, because we can all put on a face and praise the Lord and make it look like or the most holy or whatever. But when it gets down to it, this verse doesn't say it, but it also says, the Bible says you should praise the Lord in your own relationship with him. And that helps you grow with your relationship with the Lord. Turn to, turn to Daniel chapter six, verse 10. So we see the impact giving praise has on our life in a day-to-day -day basis and why it's important. But Daniel chapter 10, or chapter six, verse 10 says this, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chambers toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. So a little bit of backstory. Most of us know the story of Daniel in the lion's den, but he, he's like, a, he was, the king called him to answer like his dream to interpret the king liked them, so he made him a president. While well, the other presidents didn't like that David was the favorite. So they said, let's examine David, or not David, Daniel, sorry. And let's see what we can find a fault in his life. And they couldn't find anything wrong in his life except that he was faithful. He's faithful to his God. <laughs> uh, Okay, here we go. Um, so I say that, uh, so the presidents didn't like him, so they said, let's let's create a law that makes him like illegal. You know, thanking the Lord was a death penalty because they signed a decree, gave it to the king, and said, King, let's let's make it to where it's only legal to praise you. It's only legal to worship your God. So they brought to the kings. The king said, Oh, I like that. They did it, and this, this is kind of funny when you, when you look at it. They said, David says, when he heard it, he he says he goes back to his house, does it anyways. It kind of reminds me of like the kids when they say, when the parents tell them like, oh, don't touch the mirror, or don't touch this, or don't do this, and they immediately like, look at him and touch it. You know, like, you know, that, that's what it reminds me of. So immediately he goes back and prays just like he did anyways. And I think that's an important thing of uh, to look at there. Don't let anything get in the way of praising the, or praising the Lord and thanking the Lord and what he does in your life. Let's go back down and look at verse 3 early on. 
Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. So that's uh, before they signed the, the, uh, the decree to make it illegal, praise God, a, a death penalty it was. And the reason why I liked him is because he had a good spirit about him. You know, you want to have a good spirit about you? No one wants to be around people that are like Debbie Downers. And I was like, no one wants to be around miserable people, you know? So th giving thanks for what little or however much you have gives a good spirit in you. And that makes people want to be around you and it gives a it gives a good it gives a good spirit about you that people want to that people want to see. So we see why it's important to give thanks because not only does it bring happiness to God, it's just like praise brings happiness to God and it brings a good spirit to you just like praise does. So giving just like we should be specific in our prayers, we should also be specific in our thanks. You know, we shouldn't just be like, oh, Lord, thank you for this food. All right, let's, let's eat. And, you know, that's pretty, like, it's pretty harsh. You know, that's all, that's all he gets. You know, I get all this. We, we, our prayers are sometimes so surface level. Same with our thanks. You know, when was the last time you sat down and fully examined what the Lord's done for you in your life? And, uh. And that's what you can praise him for, that he's able to do that. You can also thank him for that. So in this Thanksgiving of, or in this season of Thanksgiving throughout this week, just keep in mind that you should be grateful for whatever you have. You know, some people, you always get caught up with, uh, with what things go wrong in your life. And I always remember as a kid, I wanted this Lego set so bad. I wanted a Toys R Us when it was still a thing. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I went to Toys R Us, I saw this Lego ship, and I wanted it so bad. And I got it for Christmas, but I started asking all these other things that I wanted. So when I got the Lego ship, I forgot that I even asked for it. <laughs> so, and I still have it to this day, too. <laughs> so things like, that's like a small scale example, but I think about uh, just, Think about what you ask for. Sometimes we start asking so much that we forget that we got what we asked for. And uh, taking a deep dive in your life and examining what you have really just brings that out and uh, it brings joy in your life. There's this uh, Christian influencer uh, in Ohio, him and his wife, they, uh, they heard about this rainfall in Kentucky. It didn't live too far away. I think it was around 21 inches of rain in two to three days some of these like lower level cities that got just severe flash flooding. And the worst thing isn't the water damage that comes from it, it's the mud that comes in with that. And so they went down just helping them out, just trying to help out the communities. And they're shoveling this mud and he's just, and he has this beautiful home that he just built and these super nice carpets and everything. And as he's shoveling the mud, he's remembering I was just complaining that my kids got a little stain on the rug, and here I am shoveling six inches of mud off of these people's house, and they have nowhere to even sleep. So just going into the season, let's let's be thankful. Let's uh, take a deep dive. Don't just rush over it and say, "Oh yes, food," although that's a uh, that's a great part of the season. <laughs> but uh, take a deep dive into it. Really be grateful and uh, take full advantage of the season. And, uh, and spend time with your family. Be grateful for, that you have a family that you can spend time with and get along with. Be grateful for the God that you can praise. Amen. Amen. Let's give him a round of applause. Miss Brenda, if you could just play some soft music here. I think he had a good thought. Let's take a deep dive and think of things we need to be thankful for. So I think we should close the day out with her playing the piano and us all just closing our eyes and thinking about things we're thankful for. Not just the common ordinary things, but think about things maybe you've never even said thank you, Lord, for.
as she continues to play and you continue to offer your thanks. I want to ask Brother Eric Harmon if he would to come up front, please. One of the dear, most faithful members of our church is, putting it bluntly, on death's doorstep right now, Brother Larry Norwood. Brother Harmon, would you take just a moment to thank God for what the Norwoods have meant to many people in this room and to our church? And then would you pray for him, please? And then after that, Brother John, will you come close us in a song and we will be dismissed after that. Well, my memory of Larry Norwood is his faithfulness. I remember when he, he uh, had just got a new car. He got one of the uh, the new Dodge station wagons. When it came out, everybody's looking at the car. That was really cool. It was, it was a company car. And I think it was with, um, within the month, he lost his job. Don't know the details of it. I know he ended up working at Home Depot. Larry never, never seemed sad, never seemed disappointed. His demeanor never changed. And that comes for one reason, trusting in God. You know, and his dear wife, wow. You know, she's just done everything in this church she could possibly do as a, as a woman. And Larry was always faithful to the choir. He and his wife had their own style of singing. They would, more of a country western style, I guess you say, I don't know what you call it, but they would sing and it's just the joy of always having smiles on their faces. Being great examples for the rest of us. You know, he's been suffering for a long time. Sometimes God allows people to go home in their sleep. And sometimes, you know, they suffer. We don't fully understand that. But we're not supposed to try to figure it out, right? We just trust God because he's a loving God. So that's what I think about Larry. I just think about his faithfulness. And he kept coming to church, kept coming to church. He's just going to get a weaker weaker and weaker until he couldn't come anymore. And I tell you, it makes me think as I think about others in our church has done the same thing. What an example. And I wonder myself, if I'm ever in their shoes, would I be that type of a person? Hopefully I can say yes. But it's so easy to, it's okay. It's okay. You know, when you have those you know, those afflictions to stay home. But what an example you you are to others when you do push through. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we love you. We thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for the message that we heard this morning. Thank you for what Matthew, the challenge you brought, what a great job you did to really make us think. And hey, Lord, I just want to, as I feel challenged in my own heart, I'd like to challenge the rest of our family here to not just be thankful of Thanksgiving. It should be something that we experience daily in our lives. Because of the study I did when I was talking to the men yesterday, 39 times that I found in the Bible where it says, give thanks. That's not, in other words, it adds to being thankful or Thanksgiving. But just 39 times we're told to do that. And Lord, I know one of the main reasons that's coming to my mind is just when we give thanks, it's acknowledging what we're, who we're thankful to. And Lord, I just thank you for being the God that you are, for loving us. Thank you for our church. Thank you for the faithfulness of the members here. Especially I think about the faith and the trust they put into the, the, leaders, the leadership team of the, the deacons and the search committee. Lord, I've just uh, just been encouraged throughout the, throughout the, all this process. Lord, as we wait to see what you're the man that you're going to bring, we're just going to trust in you. Pray that we'll continue to be uh, faithful in our, our attendance and encouragement to each other. And Lord, as I think about Larry Norwood, this could be his last night or last week. We don't know when you're going to decide to take him home. But Lord, I just pray that you would uh, ease his suffering. I pray for his dear wife, Lord, that you would comfort her during this time. I know that uh, she's suffering too. She's probably not getting much sleep. Lord, I just ask that uh, you would just put on our hearts, individual hearts, if there's ways that we can help them. I pray you just let us know to do that so we can show our love to her. And Lord, and also show act of kindness that we give you glory for. Pray as we go home today. 
Lord, you just keep us safe. We pray we'll have a, a restful day and just remember this is still your day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.